Would you look out of place starring next to the biggest old Hollywood icons? Or maybe you feel like your features don't fit our modern beauty standards. Today we're going to talk about the key facial features that distinguish classical beauty from modern beauty standards. And while there are universal objective standards of beauty which are based in human biology that tend to never go out of style from as early as our Homo erectus ancestors, preferences for certain features or the level of importance that we give to them on a specific characteristic do tend to shift over time contextually based. But before we discuss the differences between classical and modern beauty standards, let's play a quick game. I'm going to show you a series of pairs of faces and you'll have to guess which one, A or B, represents a classic or a modern attractive face. Even if we set aside the differences in fashion or style, it's immediately obvious at first glance which faces look classic and which are modern. And you just tend to know it when you see it. That being said though, it's not as easy to pinpoint exactly which parts of the face contribute to each look. Today, we're gonna to be analyzing the five key facial features that make a face look classical or modern. And while also tracing this back to the evolution from classic to modern beauty standards in casting decisions for TV and film, the modeling industry, evolving makeup techniques, and the rise and fall of certain cosmetic procedures. Imagine that you're a casting director for a moment. Which of these three actresses would you hire to star in a TV show or a film set in the 1960s? January Jones stands out immediately as the obvious choice, largely because she has one of the most important traits that define classic beauty, a high level of facial harmony and balance. Her balance features and harmonious look landed her the role of Betty Draper in Mad Men, a TV show set in the 1960s and she shares these features with her 1950 Hollywood counterparts like Grace Kelly. Grace is named as the best celebrity example of the classic body and face type in David Kibb's book Metamorphoses, characterized by high facial harmony with balanced, evenly spaced and symmetrical features. Of course, these essential elements of classical beauty are still relevant today. As we've covered at length, most people tend to find facial averageness, also known as coinophilia, quite attractive. This is a face with few facial quirks that align closely to a configuration of their population average. January Jones and Grace Kelly have high facial symmetry and feminine features, but there's not one particularly striking or memorable feature for either of the faces. When we look at other old Hollywood icons, we find the same pattern. And this is where the classic beauty standards diverge from our modern preferences. Modern developments in the aesthetics literature highlight the importance of distinguishing or striking features to differentiate somewhat between attractive faces from the most beautiful of them all. Let's go back to the original casting director question. Why wouldn't Eva Green or Olivia Wilde work well in a 1960s role? They both have distinguishing, unusual features that are much more suited to modern standards than a classical look. The celebrity examples include Halle Berry and Anya Taylor-Joy, who have noticeably wider set eyes, Adriana Lima's exaggerated almost 10 degree tilt, and Timothy Chalamet's unique chin and exceptionally chiseled jawline. Modern beauty has made room for the extremes at a level we've not seen before, as we've analyzed it in the past, where fashion model Sunaina has a unique combination of striking feminine and masculine facial features, and notably her nasal bridge. She also has an ethnically ambiguous look, which is heavily sought after by modern modeling agencies. Not just because people of mixed heritage often have desirable striking features, but also to reflect an attempt to be somewhat more inclusive and more relatable to a global audience. If you ever flick through a fashion magazine from the 1940s or 50s, take a look at the model's facial features and you'll find that they're notably different to those you'll find in magazines today, particularly in the side profile. Julia Tell tracked this evolution in fashion magazines and found Caucasian models over time began to display more non-typical Caucasian features, while African-American models displayed relatively fewer Caucasian features from the 1940s to the 1990s. This beauty standard exists not just in the modeling world, but also is clearly reflected in the plastic surgery choices of major celebrities. Take Kylie Jenner, for example, where she become more famous after cosmetic treatments in line with modern beauty standards, and now more closely resembles her half-Armenian half-sisters, despite her sole Western European heritage. Next, let's talk about the lips. Classic and modern beauty standards differ quite dramatically in this particular area, and we really see the departure from classic to modern standards when we look at changing casting decisions for the exact same roles. You recognize these mouths. On the left, we have classical beauties like Lena Carter, who played Wonder Woman in the 70s, while modern beauties like Gal Gadot, who starred in the 2017 reimagining of Wonder Woman, is shown on the right. What difference do you notice between their lips? Gal's mouth is wider, her lips are bigger, and she has a higher mouth-to-nose width ratio, which does fit in with modern standards. Somewhat plump lips were also desirable by classical beauty standards, but the preference was closer to a more moderate lip size, 
and this standard shifted throughout the 1900s which was reflected in evolving makeup techniques. Fashion and beauty expert Ali Art does know in this video that Marilyn Monroe didn't overline her lips as much as she did in the latter half of the 1950s. Which of these mouths do you think is best then? A greater emphasis on the importance of bigger lips is one of the most obvious departures from the classical era and scientists have even tracked this changing beauty standard by comparing the preferences of younger people with the older demographic who would have probably remembered Linda as Wonder Woman from their youth. If you prefer larger lower lips, your preferences are in line with younger people, especially those in their 20s while those in their 70s in this study identified the smallest lower lips as ideal. Changes in lip ratio preference overall are moving to match the long-held ideal 1 to 1 ratio for women of color, and as noted by Contes et al, traditionally a 2 to 3 upper to lower ratio was desirable for Caucasian women, while now increasing their ratio of 1 to 1 is seemed to be sought after in all races. The beauty standard for the relative size of the upper and lower lips has changed and also is how the lips compare to other features. Kimmental investigated age differences in preferred lip to nose width ratios and found that those over 50 prefer a narrower lip width relative to the nose compared to younger people favoring a lip width of 150% of the nose width. Her increased lip side actually made the most notable difference to Kylie Jenner's transformation and as reflected in the popularity of lip fillers, one of the most defining shifts in modern beauty standards is the availability and acceptability of cosmetic enhancements. It's now easier than ever to actually match the beauty standard if you weren't born with the supposed ideal proportion of the time. The mouth is also probably the most era-defining facial feature of all, we can see this through casting decisions for the few Hollywood actresses whose lips deviate dramatically from the modern beauty standard. So with this in mind, let's play that casting decision game again, and which actress would actually work the best in a 1960s role is not as clear now. The mouth region alone has a big impact on the decision here. Alexis Fleurel is the most obvious choice, where Chloe Cherry's lips are clearly too modern, while Natalie Dormer's lips are small, with an asymmetrical mouth, and the thinness breaks the Hollywood mold. She doesn't have a smartphone face, as some may put it. Her mouth and lip to nose ratio are not exactly classical either, being more reminiscent of portraits of Tudor era queens, which explains why she was cast as Anne Boleyn in the Tudors and played a starring role in Game of Thrones. If we zoom out from the lips though, for a moment and focus on the face as a whole, what differences do you actually notice between Gal and Linda's face shapes? Gal's jawline is much more defined and she has a more traditionally masculine square face compared to Linda's feminine oval or diamond shaped face. While both women benefit from high cheekbones, Linda's cheeks are noticeably fuller than Gao's. Our modern preferences have evolved to appreciate sharper features on women, which is a departure from the classical beauty standards that focused heavily on femininity with little room for androgyny. As shown through Road and colleagues' research, both men and women rate hyper-feminized female faces as more attractive. However, some androgyny in the right places and enhance a woman's beauty, with the most attractive modern female faces being characterized by feminine, neotenous features in the middle, coupled with mature features or ontogenous features along the outer perimeters. Think of two large eyes and sharp cheekbones on the outside. Hyperfeminine faces and those with a particular mix of feminine and masculine features are both considered attractive, but the latter is preferred by modern standards with a new 2023 study revealing a Western preference for sharper facial features. Can you guess? Who these jawlines belong to. First off, well, this model's lower jaw was rated as most attractive with an angle of 142 in the frontal view, and the second model had the ideal jaw in profile view of 125. And finally, this model had the ideal jaw positioning vertically positioned at the level of the stomion or the upper lip. So the most attractive celebrities or models who closely fit our beauty standards have faces with wider jaws compared to the average person, which emphasizes the importance of well-defined bone structures for physical attractiveness in this modern era context. But that study only looked at Caucasian faces. How does our modern conception of beauty differ from classical standards for those from other backgrounds? Again, wide faces with sharp features are the modern ideal, according to a 2023 study which analyzed the most beautiful celebrities of African heritages and found the ratio of facial height to bigonial width for celebrities was lower than the measured average in the wider African-American population. 1.61 and 1.64 for celebrity men and women respectively, compared to 1.85 and 1.86 in the average population. Although there's no documented analysis of the ideal facial proportions back in the era of old Hollywood, we can also make judgments based on the appearance of the most prominent celebrities and we can also analyze shifting makeup trends. Professional makeup artist Lisa Eldridge notes that while Marilyn Monroe's makeup artist applied contour along her jawline, its purpose was to make the bottom half of her face look more feminine or smaller and neotenous, closer to the heart-shaped ideal, 
and to add subtle dimensions on camera. Compare Lisa Eldridge's replica of Marilyn's exact makeup look to the modern day extreme contour and the highlighting techniques that we use to sculpt out a chiseled jawline or sharper cheekbones as shown here on Kim Kardashian's face by her makeup artist Mario Dedivanovic. A trend towards a preference for sharper features is also found on the upper half of the face. Let's compare Linda and Gal's eye regions and we see that Linda's eyes are rounder with thinner brows while Gal has a much thicker eyebrow and striking more upturned almond eyes. So can you match these eyebrows in the correct era then? It's obvious that all of these examples, except the 80s brow, they don't really match with modern beauty standards, especially the 20s and 1930s eyebrows, where Greta Garbo's exceptionally thin, very high brows would be considered a dramatic fashion statement today, but this was actually more of the norm in the 30s all the way throughout to the 50s. As makeup artist Lisa Eldridge notes in her book, Face Paint, The Story of Makeup, in 1950, an entire nine years after Greta made her last movie, she was voted the most beautiful woman in the world by the Guinness Book of World Records. Comparing eyebrow preferences of the young and old confirms a shift in standards over time, where Fessa et al. in 2007 showed that people under 30 favor lower eyebrows and dislike arched eyebrows, while older participants had the exact opposite preference. This shift from classic to modern eyebrows is documented in the plastic surgery literature also, where research from 2005 revealed that the general public preferred a lower eyebrow position than the high eyebrow ideal in the plastic surgery literature of the time. The general public also preferred an arch position more laterally relative to the lateral limbus, which again deviated from plastic surgery norms. It's not just the position and arch of the eyebrows that matter though, where a 2018 study found that, by modern standards, eyebrow thickness matches face height and jawbone prominence in terms of features that are more important for attractiveness. Take Cara Delevingne's face as a good example of this shift in standards. Her face is quite similar to Grace Kelly's, but her modern, ultra-thick eyebrows clearly date her to the modern era. Big round eyes are also a defining feature of classical beauty standards, and while large eyes are of course still considered beautiful in 2023, it's not an essential trait by any means. Many modern beauty icons like Megan Fox have actually smaller, more masculinized eyes. This change in standard reflects the move towards a mix of feminine and masculine features considered attractive for women, where we see an increase in facial robusticity and smaller eyes giving a more mature and socially dominant look to the face. Modern preferences for the tilt of the eye also differ from classical standards. We see this with the popularity of the fox eye eye lift, and this change is also documented in the scientific literature. Klein et al. found that those 50 and up preferred horizontal eyes, also known as a neutral canthal tilt, while the younger group considered a raised lateral canthus of the eye of 5 degrees, or an upward canthal tilt, as more attractive. So with that being said, if you want to learn more about your own face and much the way we've broken it down here with a lot more detail from our team of doctors and dentists, if you want to get a facial assessment performed on yourself just out of curiosity or to get a second opinion, if you're planning on getting any kind of work done, then head over to the Kuz website and have that commissioned for yourself. And as always, I'll catch you all in the next one.